I'm a professor of communication at Biola University in La Mirada, California. We have a saying within communication, all words are riddles that have to be unpacked. What does a word mean is a very interesting question. Let me give you an example. If I say the word happiness, what does happiness mean? Well, let's consider two different answers to that question. First, let's ask what most Americans, how they would define the word happiness. If you look it up in the dictionary, happiness says a pleasurable feeling. Now, what's interesting about that definition is it doesn't tell you necessarily what causes the pleasurable feeling, right? This could be helping the poor or playing Call of Duty Black Ops. Both produce a pleasurable feeling. Let's contrast that with Aristotle's answer to what is happiness. Aristotle would call happiness eudaimonia. It's a Greek word that means happiness is anything that matures you as a person. It develops your character. That's what he would call happiness. Now, do you see the big difference that makes? For example, if I were to ask you, all of you watching, um, does your marriage make you happy and use the modern definition, which means, does your marriage always give you a pleasurable feeling? I suspect many of us would say, well, not, not all the time, right? We have ups and downs. But let me ask you a different question using Aristotle's definition. Has your marriage made you happy? In other words, has it matured you? Has it made you a better person? Interesting, when I speak in ballrooms pre-COVID, uh, when I ask this question, how many of you are using the American definition of happiness, a pleasurable feeling, and I ask an auditorium, let's say 1,000 people, you get a smattering of hands. They're usually kiss-ups trying to prepare for date night. But if then if you ask the question, how many of you using Aristotle's definition, it matures you, man, everybody in the ballroom raises their hand because marriage is a powerful way of revealing our character and maturing us. See, this is what James is trying to get at when he says, consider it pure joy when you encounter trials. Uh, that word joy also could be translated happiness and it just doesn't fit the American definition, right? James is not saying to us as Christ followers, when trials hit, you're gonna have a pleasurable feeling. No, that's just not true. And those of you who have gone through medical issues or now with COVID, financial issues, no way is God saying have a pleasurable feeling when you're really struggling financially. No, James is literally using the same Greek word Aristotle used. Consider it joy, consider it a maturing process when trials hit because God is refining your character. So is marriage meant to make you happy? Well, it all depends on what definition of the word you're using, right? Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas is a fascinating book. And his subtitle is, what if God was more concerned about your holiness than your happiness? And I think that's exactly true. So how does this apply to marriage? Sit down today and list all the ways your spouse has helped you mature. Now, sometimes you may have gone kicking and screaming into the maturity. When I got married, I was very self-centered. I was very much focused on my goals, what I wanted to accomplish. And my wife has helped me to focus on her, and then when kids came, to really focus on the needs of the family, right? So make a list of all the ways marriage has matured you. Go all the way back to your first year of marriage and say, I can see myself growing because of marriage in these ways. Now, I would say, if you're saying marriage has matured you, then what you're really saying is my spouse has helped me mature. So the next step is, after you come up with that list, sit down with your spouse and say to your spouse, thank you for helping me mature in these areas. We say that acknowledgement is one of the most important parts of a communication climate. The book of Proverbs says, kind, affirming words are like honey to the soul. So when you sit down, acknowledge with your spouse, yes, I've matured in this marriage, and you have been God's instrument in helping me to mature. In the end, I think we'll get God's version of happiness not necessarily America's version.